In the last video, you saw that addition reactions to conjugated dienes can give mixtures of products, which we called the 1-2 and 1-4 addition products. Often, it's possible to control the conditions of a reaction in order to favor one, another, one or another of these products, provided a few basic conditions are met. Let's work through an example to illustrate this, keeping track of the reaction coordinate diagram as we go. In the reaction of 2,5-dimethyl-2,4-hexadiene with HBr, initial protonation occurs at one of the ends of the diene, like this, producing a resonance-stabilized carbocation. This step is uphill, because carbocations are generally quite unstable. Note that I'm drawing just one carbocation intermediate here on the reaction coordinate, even though I've drawn both resonance structures. Remember that resonance structures aren't actually different molecules, they're just two drawings of the same molecule, and the real structure is a hybrid of all the resonance structures. But the positive charge is spread out over two different carbons, and the bromide can add to two different locations, giving these two possible products. These are, in fact, two different compounds and have different energies. The one with the tri-substituted double bond is more stable than the one with the di-substituted double bond. Remember, the more substituted a double bond, the more stable it is due to hyperconjugation. We learned about that when we studied E1 eliminations, which tend to give the most substituted alkene products. So it might seem that this product must be the major one. And it is. At relatively high temperatures. But if we cool this reaction down, we actually see the selectivity switch. The other product becomes major. So, why? To figure this out, we need to examine the transition states for the, for, for the formation of the two possible products. The transition state leading to the more substituted alkene product has the bromide attack approaching the secondary position, with a partial positive localized on that position while the bromide retains a partial negative charge. The other transition state, leading to the less substituted alkene, has the bromide approaching the tertiary position, with a partial positive charge localized there. Remember, positive charge is most stable at the more substituted position, so this transition state is lower in energy than the other one. To summarize our situation, the more stable alkene product is formed via the higher energy transition state, and the less stable product is formed via the lower energy transition state. This type of situation allows us to exert what's called kinetic versus thermodynamic control. The less stable product is easier to form and doesn't require much energy to traverse its low activation energy barrier. Therefore, it's formed at low temperature. It's called the kinetic product and is the major product at low temperatures. As you increase the temperature, the kinetic product formation becomes reversible you have enough thermal energy to go back right where you came from and enough energy to surmount the higher activation energy barrier, which leads to the more stable product. We call that product the thermodynamic product. The thermodynamic product takes a little longer to form, but at high temperatures, it is the major product. This sort of situation isn't terribly uncommon. 
if one pathway has a lower activation energy barrier but leads to a less stable product than a pathway with a higher activation energy barrier, then kinetic versus thermodynamic control can apply. We'll see several more examples of this in future, vid in future videos.